course, another day, another vaccine story. What should we know about this one? Well, the big deal about this one, the big thing about this one is this is the first one that's going into large trials in the United States. It has the potential uh, of being used, of working and being effective as just a single shot. Uh, so only one dose of this uh, has to be given. They're uh, testing one dose in this trial. And the big deal about that is, of course, it's a pandemic. You need to get it to as many people as fast as possible. And a, a single dose, that could be a very efficient tool to combat, combat the pandemic because it's just simply faster acting. It's a little bit faster to conduct the trials and, you know, uh, the if it works, you know, the, the immune protection should set, it could set in as soon as 15 days after getting that one dose. Which would be phenomenal. How does this compare with Pfizer's news yesterday? It's a second drug maker now in the final stages of, hum, you know, gone to humans, if you like. Do we now have to wait for some of those humans to contract COVID? Uh, yes, we certainly, for any of these vaccines, any of these trials, you know, they, they, their estimates of efficacy are right now are based on animal studies showing immune responses and early stage human studies showing kind of immune responses, antibodies produced in the bloodstream. But what we don't know about is like what kind of antibodies and, and what kind of immune response is needed to be induced inside the bloodstream uh, to, to make, to prevent COVID-19 in an actual vaccine. So there's no actual efficacy data yet showing any of these vaccines, you know, prevents COVID-19 and, and importantly prevents like the more severe cases of COVID-19, which is the most important thing. Uh, but the earlier vaccines, including the one from Pfizer that you mentioned, those are two-dose vaccines and it appears that you don't get much of the protection until after the second dose, which is three weeks later. Uh, so that makes it uh, all that much more complicated. And the second thing about J&J's vaccine, which they're touting, is that their vaccine, unlike some of the, the Pfizer vaccine, can stay in the refrigerator and be stored at refrigerator temperatures for quite some time, whereas Pfizer's vaccine needs to be uh, frozen at very low temperatures for long storage term storage, making the distribution that much more complicated. Uh, Robert, only about 30 seconds left, but of course, it's all about getting this vaccine to people. 2021 for an emergency authorization. Does that sound a little uh, ambitious? Well, all, you know, all the timelines for these are quite ambitious and kind of, you know, record setting. If you look at the details of the J&J trial, they've actually, apparently at the request of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, uh, put in some extra, uh, extra stringent steps uh, in their trial uh, to make sure that it's not stopped early without collecting any data on people who get severe cases. Because, you know, what you don't want to do is you don't want to end up with a vaccine that gets an emergency authorization based on, you know, preventing a handful of mild cases and then later on find out, oh, it doesn't do much to prevent the, the severe cases, the hospitalizations, which is the most important thing. So, they're yes. not going to stop their trial until there's some evidence it's uh, at least, you know, helping a bit in the severe cases. So there's some more extra steps there to gather more data.